In this video, we'll look at another source of greenhouse gas, um, the formation of methane, um, specifically for the formation of methane caused by uh, archaea bacteria. Um, and, and to initially start off with, um, it's important to understand what archaea bacteria. So this is a, they are classified as bacteria, but they're a completely different domain of bacteria. And so they are um, prokaryotic cells um, found in the domain archaea rather than uh, domain prokaryota. Um, th th they will produce methane as a byproduct of when they uh, undergo anaerobic respiration. So rather than in the normal sense, uh, the, produ uh, the production of either ethanol or lactic acid, um, the archaea bacteria are producing uh, methane as the byproduct for their anaerobic respiration. Um, methane is oxidized uh, in the atmosphere uh, to form both CO2 and H2O, and it's this oxidation to CO2 that is, um, that is really concerning because it does uh, there's a large amount of methane that is released that can get converted into CO2. And once again, just like the fossils that we looked at, um, becomes a source of carbon that other, uh, other natural processes have to take care of, which are not necessarily there. And so these are, these are processes that, um, so things like if you, if you have, uh, in, in terms of photosynthesis, uh, plants normally will take in enough carbon dioxide that will offset the respiration. But if you're increasing the amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, uh, this will cause a really uh, major impact on uh, the inability of the plants to take in more carbon dioxide. Now, in terms of where uh, methanogenic bacteria are found, um, these are all the different types of uh, methanogenic bacteria that are, um, that are available. So you can find them most commonly uh, in places like hydrothermal vents. And often um, the bacteria that are found here are used for other reasons. If you look at the temperatures that are being, uh, that, are, that they are found in, um, the, a, a lot of times in terms of um, our understanding of different um, DNA replication enzymes and, and different enzymes in general, uh, we often source uh, high temperature variant enzymes from these bacteria. Um, but these bacteria are found in all sorts of different, um, in terms of animals, in trees, um, and then also industrially, uh, we, can, we produce archaeobacteria as part of our, uh, let's say, our, our, as part of our sewage uh, treatment facilities. And so the methanogens will often uh, occupy uh, places like landfills. Um, they'll be found in the soil, um, in ruminants. Ruminants are uh, cow species, uh, guts of termites, and even in the sediment that's already down below. So it could be found in the sediment below the ocean and at the bottom of the lakes. Typically, those will not be tapped into and those will stay below the ocean floor. Uh, but things like uh, sewage digesters or, um, you know, the, uh, or in landfills where you will have this bacteria and it'll be open to the atmosphere, you can start uh, generating a large amount of methane um, through this. Now, in terms of just some of these terms here that we need to understand, uh, methanogens are, they're prokaryotic cells, remembering that a prokaryotic cell is a unicellular uh, organism. Uh, they lack uh, any. They lack a membrane-bound nucleus. Uh, instead, their their uh, their genetic material is found in uh, in a region called the nucleoid. Uh, and they also don't have mitochondria. And hence, they can't undergo aerobic respiration. They always undergo anaerobic respiration. Um, the prokaryotic cells are divided into uh, two domains. So divided into uh, the archaea and the normal bacterial domain. In terms of what it means uh, for methanogenic archaea, in terms of the domain that they're in, um, there are some major differences between um, the U bacteria that are normally found um, in terms of the normal bacteria, as we call them, or the archaea bacteria. Uh, some of these um, differences will actually allow the archaea bacteria to utilize energy differently. Um, and so some major differences here between them ha are that uh, archaea bacteria actually have um, some structural differences. They have uh, similar to histone proteins. 
uh, that where their D where the DNA wraps around the histone proteins, whereas the normal bacteria do not have histone proteins. They also have some introns, which normal bacteria do not. Um, they have the same type of ribosomes, but their cell wall composition um, is made of protein. Um, so, sorry, cell wall uh, made of protein uh, versus um, what we know as uh, peptidoglycans. Um, so the composition of the cell walls is completely different between the archaea and the normal bacteria. Um, and they, they, link their, um, they link their lipids uh, differently as well. So there's a, there's a different orientation um, of, uh, of lipids uh, in terms of the glycerol. So of lipids and in brackets glycerol. And all of these things cause, and I'm going to write this off to the side here, uh, all of these features uh, allow for unique ecological rules. Um, and, and one of them is actually in, in terms of production of methane, which normal bacteria are not able to do. Methane itself, um, methane, it, its chemical formula is CH4. Um, it is the uh, simplest hydrocarbon, um, and it actually is it's the simplest hydrocarbon. Uh, it also uh, signifies um, the four bonding structure to carbon. Um, it is a flammable material, and it often is used as, uh, used as fuel. Um, but it's also, the most of the methane is actually produced by uh, methanogenic bacteria. Anaerobic respiration, um, at this point you may or may not have seen the videos um, about, um, about the cell respiration uh, unit, um, but anaerobic respiration is a type of cellular respiration. Um, but more specifically, this is where uh, no oxygen is used. Um, methanogenesis is, um, this is where you have the production of methane um, by, um, uh, by the archaea bacteria. So uh, methanogenesis is the term that's used to describe anaerobic respiration for um, archaea bacteria. And this is where uh, they produce, it's the production of methane by archaea bacteria. And then finally, the last step that has to occur um, for, for methane to become, uh, as we call a typical greenhouse gas, is the oxidation of the methane. And so the oxidation is, um, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a chemical um, reaction where you have loss of electrons. Um, or you have uh, a reaction during this reaction and, and or you have and it's often uh, in reaction as it says with the oxidation it's in reaction with oxygen um, and within the carbon cycle methane is uh, methane becomes oxidized to produce uh, carbon dioxide so methane plus uh, oxygen will produce uh, carbon dioxide and water and both water vapor and carbon dioxide these are both examples of greenhouse gases and so even water vapor as it gets trapped can act as a as a greenhouse gas um, and so both of those things and this is why methane is doubly dangerous is that it 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 will react with oxygen very easily producing two forms of greenhouse gases that are not um, so good for the environment so this video sh uh, should make it clear in terms of um, the role of archaea bacteria and their production of methane um, and how most of the methane that's produced um, is by these bacteria. But there are other sources of uh, archaea bacteria that we, can, that we, that we have on, on Earth um, and can actually contribute to the amount of carbon dioxide or greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Um, in the next video, we're going to start looking at um, 
how uh, CO2 fluctuates over seasons, uh, specifically in the Northern Hemisphere. This will be sort of an application uh, video in terms of how we're using data to actually figure out um, and track the amount of CO2 that's being produced. So those are coming up in the next few videos.